I found a real horror story of Valencia. Just listen to this chilling experience of Teresa Sullivan. From the very start of our holiday in Valencia, we were given the wrong information, wrong directions and absolutely no help from the locals and police. To top it all, I was savagely mugged and robbed ending up in hospital. This story got me thinking, how can one avoid problems like this and as a bonus save significant time and money? Well, I've used my 12 years of tour guiding experiences to create 4 simple steps that everyone can follow in a matter of minutes. The first step provides you with a practical tool to experience the best Valencia has to offer. The second step helps you find the best accommodation and the third one assists you in choosing the perfect time to visit. Finally, the fourth step offers another practical tool to tackle the daily challenges of beautiful Valencia. If it sounds like a lot of work, don't worry as I've already done all the hard work. You just need to follow along. first step, we will make an essential tool that we will use in the next two steps. Its three key components include the best attractions and activities, the location of each activity and an estimated time for each. To make it real easy, I'll share my list of attractions and activities with timing suitable for most people. Your only task is to open either your Google or Apple Maps and pin the location of each activity. By the end of this step, you will have a useful Valencia map marked with must-see attractions, a list of all activities you want to do and you will know exactly how much time each one will take. My list starts with two pentagon-shaped towers constructed over 600 years ago and known as Serranos Towers. They were part of Valencia's city walls serving as a protective structures for the city's busiest gates. Today they offer an excellent starting point to capture the essence of the city, providing splendid panoramic view. Right behind the towers lies historic El Carmen neighborhood, particularly popular for its charming streets, great restaurants, tapas bars and vibrant nightlife. Amidst the lively atmosphere, numerous museums and art galleries can be found. Not to be missed is the Church of St. Nicholas, often referred to as Valencia's Sistine Chapel, renowned for its breathtaking frescoes. The rest of the old town is also filled with beautiful historical buildings, including 15th century Gothic palace that once served as the headquarters of the Valencia government. There is also the stunning Rococo nobility palace Marquis de los Aguas, now repurposed as the National Ceramics Museum, and La Nau, the former building of the old university. If you're a fan of the Holy Grail legend, then Valencia's Cathedral should be on the top of your list. One of the most famous attractions in the city treasures a cup apparently used by Jesus Christ at the Last Supper. Inside the cathedral is the chapel housing the Holy Chalice. Apparently, St. Peter brought the chalice to Rome, but during the persecution of Christians, the chalice was moved to Spain and it found its home in Valencia Cathedral. Valencia is the home of the most famous Spanish dish, paella, a rice dish that typically includes a variety of ingredients such as saffron, paprika, vegetables and meat or fish. The traditional must-try paella valenciana is made with chicken and rabbit. If there is another Spanish delicacy you love, you'll find it inside Valencia's central market. Beautiful Art Nouveau metal and glass building blends perfectly with the historic architecture. Most vendors speak English and allow you to taste their products, so you should have fun exploring the stalls. Opposite to the food market is one of the most famous masterpieces of non-religious Gothic architecture in Europe. The Lonja de la Seda is part of UNESCO World Heritage. This finest monument of Valencia's golden age was built at a time when the city was one of Europe's main centers of trade and culture. But the building was used by all sorts of merchants from all parts of the Mediterranean. Here, they met for negotiations and closed the deals. The Falas Museum is dedicated to one of the most popular Spanish festivals that takes place every March. It's known for its quirky satirical figures called Niños that are set on fire on the last day of the festival to welcome the spring. Since 1933, the best Niño has been saved from the flames and is exhibited in the Falas Museum. 
Beyond its captivating historic city, Valencia offers stunning Mediterranean beaches with long and popular strips of golden sands. Along the seafront promenade are year-round open cafes and restaurants, creating a perfect blend of leisure and seaside charm. But Valencia is also known for its iconic modern architecture built in the old riverbed. The City of Arts and Sciences is the largest complex of its kind in Europe and includes seven futuristic buildings that have all become symbols of the city. An opera house and performing arts center is a majestic building with an impressive roof. Next to it is the Hemispheric, resembling a giant eye, houses both an IMAX cinema and a planetarium. Adjacent to it is the Interactive Museum of Science, resembling the skeleton of a whale. Inside, visitors can explore a variety of interactive exhibits that offer hands-on learning experiences utilizing cutting-edge technology. I highly recommend a visit, which typically takes about an hour and a half. Nearby stands the immense oval-shaped metal structure known as the Agora. This multi-purpose space promotes knowledge, science and culture, hosting various events. The open structure with a walkway under the arches is surrounded by a park featuring indigenous plant species unique to Valencia. Spanning the old riverbed is an impressive, white cable state bridge. However, the pinnacle of architecture marvels is the largest and most modern aquarium in Europe. The unique arrangement of various aquariums make the marine world more accessible, featuring futuristic structures and stunning underwater tunnel, the longest in Europe. I strongly recommend a visit that typically takes about two hours. You could add a few more activities to customize this list with your personal preferences, such as the Fine Arts Museum or the National Ceramic Museum. Also, be sure to add more time for the beach during the warmer months. Once you fine-tune the list and all activities are pinned on your map, you will end up with a very useful tool. Not only you can use it for navigating in Valencia, but it can also be utilized to find the best accommodation, which is our step number two. The map clearly shows that most of our activities are located inside the Old Town or Ciudad Vela. Here you will also find most restaurants, shops with souvenirs and artisan products, and easy access to vibrant nightlife. However, people often underestimate the size of Valencia's Old Town. At the same time, the Old Town has no metro stations, only bus lines, and in many cases, the fastest way to get around is on foot. That is why a good location can save you a lot of time and energy and greatly reduce the need for public transport. So look for a place that suits your needs and budget and is ideally located in the middle of the cluster of your activities or as close as possible. But don't overstay in Valencia, as that extra time and money can take you to many great places. On the flip side, you wouldn't want to run out of time and miss out on things. To get it just right, you could use our tool. Check the estimated total time needed for all activities on your list. On mine, the time adds up to 14 hours and 45 minutes. Based on my experience, you can plan for about 6 to 7 hours of activities in a day. The remaining time is needed for moving around, eating, shopping, taking photos, discovering unexpected surprises and simply savoring the moments. So my total time is equivalent to two full days and a small portion of the third day. This suggests that booking three nights is the optimum time in my case. Add extra nights as needed to spend more time on the beaches, festivals or engage in other activities. But don't forget to consider what kind of weather you want for these activities. The time of your visit can have a significant impact on the overall experience, but it's often overlooked and most people end up visiting Valencia in the summer when it gets excessively hot and crowded. Therefore, unless you plan to spend most of your time on the beach, I advise you against visiting in July and August. While Valencia is a year-round destination, the most ideal times are spring and autumn when temperatures are mild and pleasant. The best months for our activities are March and April, although March is very popular due to the incredible and unique Las Falas festival. For autumn, the optimal months are September and October, as they still allow swimming in the Mediterranean while avoiding the scorching heat of summer. Winters in Valencia are also favorable with mild temperatures compared to many other European destinations, fewer crowds and lower rates. 
The only major downside is that swimming in the sea may not be an option. The final step will prepare you for little everyday things. If overlooked, they can turn your holiday into a series of unpleasant experiences. To avoid such issues, arm yourself with a collection of practical tips and tricks and you can start with the following ones. To reach the city from Valencia Airport, you can use taxis, metro or bus. The metro station is conveniently located on the ground floor of the regional flights terminal. At its entrance, you'll find several ticket machines. From the machine, you first need to buy a transport pass, a reusable plastic or cardboard card called Mobilis. Then you load your rides on this card. For travel to the city center, choose A, B plus ticket. There are two metro lines, 3 and 5, both passing the city center, so you can choose either one. The metro departs every 15 minutes on the weekdays and approximately every 20 minutes on the weekends. Bus number 150 is the cheapest option and the station is right between the airport building and the car park building. It can be recognized by the metro bus logo and the tickets can be bought on board. With your Mobilis transport card, you can switch between buses, metro and trams as needed. You can reload your card at any metro or tram station. It's important to know that the network is divided into three zones. A, B and the airport marked as the plus zone. For reaching the activities on our list, you will need a Zone A ticket. Just remember, if you travel to or from the airport, an AB Plus ticket is necessary. The metro and tram run from 4 am to 11.30 pm with extended schedules on weekends. But within the historic city center, there are only buses running from 6 am to 10 pm. When you get thirsty, you can safely drink tap water anywhere in Valencia. Municipal water supplies are regularly monitored and treated to meet health regulations. It's also a good idea to know meal times. Lunch is the main meal in Valencia and is usually served between 1 pm and 4 pm. A light afternoon snack is called merienda and is typically taken between 5 pm and 7 pm. Dinner is usually served later in the evening, starting at around 8 pm to 11 pm. Most restaurants offer a special lunch deal known as Menu del Dia that provides an affordable and convenient option. Typically, it includes local specialties and consists of multiple courses such as Starter Primero, a main course Segundo, a dessert or coffee and a complimentary drink. Almost every restaurant in Valencia serves paella, typically prepared and presented in one large pan. However, it's often available only as a meal for two or more people, making it a relatively expensive dish. But this great, small, rice paella takeaway shop in the city center offers excellent paella in portions at affordable prices. It operates exclusively during siesta hours between noon and 4 pm and is highly popular among the locals. Like in other parts of Spain, coffee is not available in sizes but comes under different names. Café Solo is a single shot of strong black coffee. Café Americano is similar to Solo but with added hot water to dilute the strength. Cortado is short black coffee with a small amount of warm milk to take off the edge. Café con leche is a coffee with an equal amount of hot milk. One distinct Valencian coffee option is Caragillo Valenciano. This is essentially a café solo with a shot of brandy, a bit of lime's rim, a cinnamon stick and sugar. While there is no compulsory expectation to tip in Valencia, it is still appreciated for good service. In restaurants, cafes and bars, it's common to leave small change or round up the bill. Similarly, when it comes to taxi drivers, rounding up the fare is widely practiced gesture of appreciation. Hotel staff also appreciate a small tip for good service. When it comes to tour guides, tipping is customary for excellent service with a range of 5 to 10 percent often considered appropriate. Most shops in Valencia are open from Monday to Saturday but are closed on Sundays and public holidays. But keep in mind that most shops and businesses may close for siesta in the early afternoon. However, you'll find that most tapas bars and restaurants remain open during these hours as it aligns with lunchtime. Unlike some other destinations, Valencia provides good value city passes. The Valencia Tourist Card is highly convenient and provides free admission to municipal museums and monuments, special discounts on Valencia main tourist attractions and unlimited travels on public transportation. I'll include the link in the description below. Valencia is one of the safest cities in Spain. 
while violent crime is rare, pickpockets remains common concern, particularly in major tourist areas and on public transportation. Also keep in mind that Valencia is known for its abundant sunshine. Sunscreen, a hat and sunglasses are essential to protect yourself from the sun, particularly during the hot months. As Valencia is a popular tourist destination, especially during the Las Falas festival and in the summer, it is advisable to book in advance to avoid disappointments. Beyond Las Falas, Valencia hosts various festivals throughout the year. Explore local celebrations like La Tomatina in Buñol and consider joining the festivities. If you have already visited Valencia, please share your tips and tricks in the comments below to assist others in planning smooth and enjoyable holiday. With all four steps now under your belt, you are well prepared for an amazing experience in Valencia. To further enhance your trip, check the QR code or description below for my favorite Valencia tours, tickets and experiences. To better understand the first step, take a deep dive into my video Things to do in Valencia. If you are planning to explore other destinations in Spain, consider checking out my playlist. Thanks for the thumbs up and for watching and see you next time.